We're going to get going in a couple minutes. Just a reminder to silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, and we're going to limit to one follow-up and then give it to somebody else. Reminder to everybody to silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. And you'll announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. 
For the Auburn Tigers, their student athletes are Bryce Brown and Mustafa Heron. And we will take questions for the student athletes when you're ready. <coughs> Uh, Philip Marshall from uh, Auburn 247 Sports. Uh, you guys and Coach Coach Pearl have talked a lot about Jared and how vital he is to, to this team winning. Could y'all just talk about what that is exactly, what it is he brings that makes him so important? You want one first? Or? I'll go. Um, you know, just he's that he's the extra threat that we have, and um, he's one of the leaders on the team. He um he ha he has he's been overlooked just like um quite quite few of us on the team and he, he brings that dog to the team um, along with me and Mustafa and, and other players like Deshaun. So he, he he's a great asset for us. He's a, he's, a, he's a little general for us and um you know he he, he plays big for us. Mark Murphy from inside the Auburn Tigers. Both guys you had a little little injury, illness, whatever down the stretch. Are you guys hundred percent ready physically? Hundred percent ready to go. Near near. Near <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. And also, uh, both guys, what do you think the key to success is going to be tomorrow night for you guys? It's rebounding, playing hard, uh, coming out with energy. You know, can't come out slow, lax days ago. Just got to come out with maximum energy and effort. Um, they're supposed to have pretty good guards. So, um, you know, just containing our, containing our matchups and winning our matchups. And um, like Stop said, just, just try to out rebound and, and play harder than the other team. Justin Ferguson, SEC Country. Uh, Bruce and some of your teammates have talked over the last couple of weeks about how important the Italy trip was for you guys to get this far this season. Just looking back at that, now that you are here in the NCAA tournament, how much did that trip lay the foundation? Both of y'all, whoever wants to go first. Oh, um, you know, I, I appreciate the administrators and everybody um, for allowing us to go because it, it, is, a, it is a huge reason of our, of our success right now. Um, it's definitely helped us um, build chemistry and a relationship with all the team, with our with our whole team and the and the coaches. So, um, you no, know, it it definitely benefited for the, for this team, and um, it, it's taken us a long way. I think uh, <clears throat> the mentality out there was us against the world. You know, foreign country, foreign people. You know, we didn't know anybody. It was just us. So now it's the same thing. We're in foreign territory right now, so it's it's us against the world. James Crepia from AL.com. Guys, you both are obviously the leading scorers on this team. At times when you've each been out the other one has had to step up or other guys have had to step up. On this stage and in this caliber of game, do you each feel a bigger onus to pick up what you do and contribute more offensively? Um, I, I feel like we're going to continue doing what we're doing. And that's um, providing the team with scoring and, and just playing harder than our man and winning our matchup. We've done that all season long. And it's, um, it's a reason why um, we've, we've, we've helped lead our, lead our team along with other players. So um, you know we just go out there and play hard and, 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 and compete. Um, you know, let, let, let our game do the talking. Yeah. Coach has talked about all season, and you guys have as well, about you're, you're at best when everybody contributes. And your record when four or five guys score in double figures is fantastic. But your last three losses have come when it's been three guys scoring in double figures. As facilitators as well as scorers, do you feel you have to get, whether it's Davion or Chuma or Malik, those the role players, the other players on this team, more involved in order to have better success? Uh, definitely. Uh, like you said, when everybody contributes, we win. So that's what we got to do. Matt Stevens, Montgomery Advertiser. Two different questions. For, for Bryce, uh, you've kind of talked about it, but can you kind of put into words what this kind of means to be at the NCAA tournament? And did you feel like your freshman year, you were anywhere close, and then did it feel like so far away for you? And then for Mustafa, you had the opportunity to go to a whole different, a lot, a lot of different schools that had NCAA tournament histories and, and better winning traditions. And what was it that was this part of kind of building something at Auburn that why you kind of picked where you picked? Well, um, well, yeah, for me, it, it was definitely something that I didn't see that would, would be this near in the future um, when, from when, when, when I was a freshman. So um, yeah, definitely from just seeing the progress that this program has made in the, from my freshman to junior year, just the caliber of players we've gotten and, uh, and um, just their mentalities and, and, um, and just, just how, how, they, how they think about the game and, and how they go as how we all go about as professionals. Um, I feel like um, you know it's just been a different environment because we all, we all train like we're trying to make it to the next level and, um, and that's how we play as well, I feel like. 
I think for me it was uh, just a matter of just going somewhere where I feel like I can make my own mark. I mean, I, you look at all the other, you know, big name schools that everybody wants to go to that kind of have a tradition. I kind of wanted to help start a tradition somewhere else, and um, I think that's what we're doing right now. Any other questions for the student athletes? Mustafa, uh, this team's loaded with a lot of guys who are not only good high school players, but played on like state championship teams and real strong teams. Do you think that sort of carried over in, into the team's success this year? Definitely. I think uh, winning mentality travels no matter where you go. So if you put a bunch of winners, winners together, you're going to get a uh, winning program. And I think that's what we're starting to do. Brent Scrotenborg, USA Today Sports. I wonder if you guys could talk about how challenging this season has been going back to last fall and everything that happened. You lost two teammates. You lost an assistant coach. It seemed pretty crazy back then. How, how challenging has this season been since then? Um, it was very challenging, but um, part of the things that, that were happening were just things that we that were out of our control. And uh, our coaches preached, us, preached to us, um, just, just do things that you're able to control. And we can't control um, some of the things that were happening at the beginning of the season. But um, I can tell you that um, we, we've overcome those things, and we've ended up having a, a pretty good season. You know, you know, we have much more to show and, and much more to accomplish. You feel the same way, Mustafa? Yeah, definitely the same way. You guys both talked about the guard matchups in this one, and it's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups in this game, in particular for both of you. Just what do you what do you see in matching up against Riller and Chile in particular in this one, and in particular Chile's ability to get to the line. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting matching up with um, those two guards and you know, only be great guards. And um, you know that doesn't mean that we won't we won't need a, a big play out of you know guys like Deshaun and um, and um, um, Horace and and Davion and, and, and Malik. We still need those guys to play. It's not just about the two guards. So um, you know um, me and Mustafa are going to just try to get everybody in the locker room focused in and um, of course on those two matchups. But worrying about their matchup as well and trying to outplay their matchup as well as as well as we try to play outplay ours. So. Miss uh, Bruce and Jared said last week that they felt like the team needed a kind of a, a reset this this week heading into practice. I know you guys had a contact practice this week and just trying to get back to where you were at at the begin or earlier in the season. You feel like you guys have done that um, this this past week? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was um, definitely after the tournament trying to find our identity again. You know, uh, the way we defended, the way we played, it was just. Everything was based on trying to find out who we were again and trying to get back to that. And I think we've been doing a pretty good job of that. Bryce, among all the things that you've kind of gone through injury-wise uh, this last month, it seemed like in the last on-campus practice you were going through kind of a stomach illness problem. Do you, have you kind of been able to move past that at all, or do you feel like that'll be an issue tomorrow night? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I was just um, that was about the first first five to ten minutes of that practice. Um, I, I really just didn't get much sleep the night before. That's that's all that really was. But um, yeah, I'm 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 feeling good, feeling feeling great. Any other questions for the student athletes? One more. Phil and Marshall, gonna stop it. You you never said anything about Jared. Uh, could you just talk talk about him and what a guy that can facilitate like he does, as well as shoot like he does, mm -hmm. uh, brings. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty basic. Uh, you know, when he plays well, we win. When he doesn't, we don't. W you know, we don't win. He is the general of our team. He is. You know, he controls the floor. He controls the balance of the team, the offense, and the, and on the defensive end. So, when he does what he does, we win. If he doesn't, then we don't win. Which goes for everybody, pretty much. All right, gentlemen. Thank you.
Make sure, uh, even on the second time around, that you uh, announce who you are and what affiliation so that helps the ladies over there. Again, a reminder, silence your cell phones, flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Up next is Auburn coach Bruce Pearl and an opening statement. Well, it's great to be back um, in the, uh, to play for a national championship. I was uh, reminiscing with friends and family and counted up that the fact that this is my 25th time, either as a manager or a student assistant or assistant coach and our head coach. So uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 been a, it's been a lot of fun getting to play in March. For my children, the NCAA tournament was spring break. And uh, when I got out of coaching for a while, they kind of missed that, um, being on the road to the Final Four and that one shining moment. Um, I am beyond thrilled that uh, that Auburn was able to win a championship in men's basketball in, uh, in the SEC. Um, it's only happened three times, and it happened in a year when the league was about as good as it's, uh, as it's been in a long, long time. Um, I think our team um, was a team that, in spite of some challenges, came to play every night because we just weren't able to show up and win. Uh, we knew we were up against it. Um, and that's, that is 
that is hard for really talented, deep teams to do in January and February. And so we were able to sneak up because we, we came to play every night. Now that you get to March, and we're not, not that we're not sneaking up on anybody, but everybody is excited about playing. Everybody is fully engaged. The reason why I say this is because I've been on really talented teams. I won a national championship in 1995 uh, at Division II Southern Indiana. We finished third in our league. We were one of those teams that may not have been excited about playing in January and February. But you know what? By the time we got in the tournament, we said, you know, we only need to win six games, and we knew we were talented enough to do it. The cream does tend to rise to the top. And um, so for us, we got to find a way to play better than we have the last six games of the season without Anthony McLemore. Um, one of the things that were ailing us a little bit was we weren't able to practice. We weren't able to have contact practices. We had a couple this week. We survived them. And I'm hoping that that gives us a little bit of an edge as we come to this moment of trying to guard College of Charleston and be able to execute things we need to do to be able to advance. Questions for Coach Pearl. Uh, Andrew Miller with the Post and Courier in Charleston. Um, it's, this is kind of a matchup between uh, really elite guards. Just talk about Riller and Chile and, and what you've seen on them in film and what uh, problems they present. Uh, they, they're, they're handfuls. Um, you know, I, it, it, the matchup of Jared Harper and Bryce Brown and you know, Riller and Chile, that, that's a real key matchup for the, uh, for the outcome of the game. Um, Chile is a, uh, he gets to the foul line uh, seven and a half times a game. Uh, he's crafty, he's creative, he's smart. Um, he sells fouls to the officials really well, whether it's driving downhill, taking advantage of angles, or kicking his leg out from three and creating some contact and getting an official call, uh, three shot fouls. Uh, he's smart. Uh, he can go either way, and he can score at the rim. Uh, you got to guard him from three. You can't back off him. He's not a – can't close out short on him. He's got size to see over the ball screens. He's a really good player, and he can defend. Uh, he really is just an elite scorer. I'm terrific athlete, gets downhill, um, finishes at the rim. Again, doesn't need much time to get that thing off. I mean, those guys are really tough covers, really tough. They're as tough of covers as we've seen all year long when it comes to, you know, matchups. So Davion Mitchell, Jared Harper, Bryce Brown, those are the three guards that are primarily going to be in that rotation. And their ability to contain those guys will go a long way to determine the outcome of the game. Philip Marshall, Auburn 247 Sports. Bruce, you've, you've talked several times about how important Jared is to this team's success or lack of it. Just, could you just talk about what it is about him that makes one guy be that, that special to what you do? Well, I think it's uh, just like Cheely would be for College of Charleston. I think Jared is for us. First of all, he's our quarterback. Uh, he's got the ball in his hands at the beginning of every offensive possession, and he's got, the end, he's got his hands on the ball at the end of it most of the time. Um, and, um, you know, he is our, he is our playmaker. Um, he can score, but, but he knows his responsibilities to make sure that the other four guys on the floor are involved and in in put in positions to make shots, be able to get them the ball in space and make plays, so on and so forth. And he's probably our best communicator defensively, calling out signals and, 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 and kind of helping set our defense. So uh, when, you know, Jared's had a great year. Um, and there have been a handful of games he hasn't played well. And we, we've lost in those handful of games. That just that you know he has to he has to play pretty well for us to win. James Crappyale.com. Bruce, a couple of weeks ago when you beat Alabama, you have career performances from role players without Mustafa out there. Since then, whether it's Davion or Chuma or Malik, they are not having those kind of contributions. And I understand outliers. How important when you talk about everybody has to contribute in your own three when three guys in the last three games when three guys score in double figures, is it for those guys to pick up their contributions offensively? It's it's crucial and and offensively and defensively, we play best when everybody contributes and um, when when the you know obviously Jared and Mustafa and Bryce are pretty recognized 
as three of our best players. And, um, but truly, you look at how Deshaun Murray stepped up in the SEC tournament, or there have been times when, when his play as a really tough matchup has been significant. Or Chumo Kiki, um, he, he's got ability to, to, at times, be a, a major factor in games. Has he, he's played a little like a freshman the last week or two. And he's, he has the ability to pick up and be a major factor. Um, Malik Dunbar was a guy that had a lot to learn to be able to contribute at the highest level of Division One college basketball, but he's got a lot of physical ability. And he's got a great heart and a great spirit. Um, when we have won games, big games, road games, things like that, we've gotten great contribution from those guys in the big three that have to carry us. So there's no question that if we can get those guys going, not just offensively, but overall. Because we got eight guys. We're down to eight guys. That's it. There's not a ninth man. And, you know, the ninth man is Pat Kine, who is, who is uh, a, a, a walk-on on scholarship. That's it. Justin Ferguson, SEC Country. Uh, Bruce, you talked about several times this season how important that Italy trip was to get your team ready for what they ended up doing this year. Now that you guys are at – the NCAA tournament, and you look back, just how important was that trip to get you guys here? I think one of the greatest rules that the NCAA has is allowing those foreign trips. Um, from a cultural standpoint, from an academic standpoint, um, it, it is, there's nothing like it in the world. And uh, I've, traveled, I've traveled with teams um, since I started in coaching. Oftentimes, almost always, the year following it, we've had great, really good seasons. That's not the reason just why we do it. Um, but the guys have said that we went to Italy as a team. We came back as a family. Um, regardless of the moments that you've, you, you, you would say um, were the most precious moments of your life, winning and advancing in the NCAA tournament, the birth of a child, whatever it is, it's because you did that with people that you care about. You did it with friends and family or teammates. That's what makes those moments so special. So when you advance to this tournament, and it's special, you realize that the only way you got to advance is because your players or your coaches or others carried you there. Now, you, you, know, you played your role. I've got a job to do. Players got the job to do. But without them, without each other, it's not possible. Mark Murphy from Inside the Auburn Tigers. What does Chuma need to do to get back playing like he was? He's been rebounding really well, but offensively he hasn't been on. Well, I think it's a confidence factor for him, too. Um, Chuma can score inside and out. He can score multiple ways and uh, kind of rely on, on him a little bit with just his three ball. He can do a lot more than that. Um, thing I talked to Chuma about, just trust your instincts. He knows how to pass. He knows how to put in the floor. He, he knows how to defend. He knows how to rotate and take a charge. He can do more out there, and he's a high-end rebounder. But for us to win, he has to do more. You know, we talked about losing Anthony. We lost our best rim protector. We lost our best finisher around the basket, somebody that you could use in ball screen to roll or pop. I mean, he was a dynamic weapon. But as a result of him playing not 20 minutes, Horace is playing more, Deshaun's playing more, and Schumann's playing more. Well, that's not a bad thing because they all, they all bring things to the table. The, the one thing that none of them are bringing, with the exception of Horace, and the, sometimes that creates foul problems, is rim protection. That's something that Anthony could do that not many other six, seven guys in this country can do, and that's block him and change him. And we missed that, uh, clearly missed that. But Chuma, even though he's a freshman and having to play center, I didn't recruit him to play center. He was going to play four or maybe three. But because of no Austin Wiley, no Daniel Purifoy, no Anthony McLemore, he has to play five for about 20 minutes a game. This team is loaded with players who – either won state championships or came close to it. What kind of factor can that be in postseason? I love guys that won championships, and you're right. More than half of our roster have been state champions at some point, sometimes multiple. And, you know, those guys, they got it. They know how to win. And, uh, and, and that's something that we certainly can rely on at this time of the year. Matt Stevens, Montgomery Advertiser. Bruce, can, now that you're here, can you talk about two and three years ago how far away it felt and seemed like the NCAA tournament was? Or did you know you were closer because Jared Harper, Mustafa Haran, et cetera, et cetera, were coming? 
I thought that, that the way the roster was being built, um, that we, we could get here. But we needed to get here this year. Because uh, I said at the beginning of the year, I thought this was an NCAA tournament team. Um, and uh, and, and I, 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 I felt like this was the year we were going to make that, make that move. I thought the personnel was there. I needed to make sure that I was there, that I was good enough to be able to pull the strings and do the things that I needed to do to get us back um, where Auburn belongs. And um, so I had, I did, I had confidence that uh, that this could be a very special year. I wasn't sure we could win the league, but I knew we could get here. And um, and I obviously obviously wanted the kids to be able to experience this. You know, we got we have to got to play College of Charleston, New Mexico State, Clemson, you know, Auburn. One of those four teams going to the Sweet 16, and it's going to take two wins to do that. And I think all four teams in this bracket think they they have a chance. They have a legitimate chance. I don't see anybody in this bracket, regardless of us being seated four, Clemson five, head and shoulders about above anybody else. It's going to be, it's going to be very competitive. Ellie Lieberman, SB Nation. Um, beyond Mustafa being a great ball player, um, as you know, he's also an activist off the court with gun um, against gun violence. What do you think about that? I think it's great. I think when when student athletes uh, use their platform to be able to try to make a difference. Um, Mustafa's uh, 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 got a, a program at home against gun violence. He's also got a reading program at home uh, for kids that, to, to promote reading. And, um, it's a, and he is an activist. He is a social activist. And he'd like to try to do more. I think he, he's not afraid to try and right wrongs. And uh, he leads by example. He's a hardworking, dedicated, disciplined student athlete um, that's positioning himself to be able to you know, do things for himself. He came to Auburn to win championships and try to make history. He has. And I think he'll continue to use his platform to try to make changes in a positive way. Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Bruce, with all that your program, I'm back here, with, with all that your program has gone through this year off and, and, and on the court, what is it about, I guess, the makeup of these kids that has not, for the most part, allowed some of that stuff to seep in and for them to have the success they've had this year? For those of us that don't see you see you guys every day, yeah, I just I think because if you think about uh, 365 days in a year, and you think about everything that you got to do all day every day to put yourself in position to try to play for a championship, whether it be academically or in the weight room or your training or your diet or your rest or your practice, your individual workouts, shots at night, and then you go through a a, a process with an internal investigation or answering questions from the NCAA. You know, you, you only do that for a few hours or whatever. It is. That's it. And then you move on and go back to focusing on the things that you're at Auburn to do as a student athlete. So it, it doesn't dominate our, our thinking because it hasn't dominated our time. We've had to go through the process. The kids have gone through the process. The guys that are out there are all certified as eligible. And, 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 and we're moving, we, we've moved on. I feel really badly for a couple of guys that, that whose eligibility was, was denied because of the mistakes that were made and feel responsible and accountable. And obviously, with those guys, we'd be even better. But they're out right now. And we've got, we had to move forward without them. And the kids have done a great job of that. Final question over here. Bruce, Gene Sapica from the Charleston Post and Courier. Do you still feel like you'll come out of this FBI mess personally OK? And when do you expect to talk to the Auburn investigators? Well, I'm not going to comment specifically about that. Um, but I am confident that when everything is said and done, that I'll be still be coaching at Auburn. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Good deal, Sal. Hang in there. Could be worse. <laughs> there you go. Good attitude. We'll get going with the Clemson student athletes in about two minutes. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Silence your cell phones. And for Clemson, we have Gabe DeVoe and Marquise Reed. And we are ready for questions for the student athletes. Over here to your guys left, Joe Gorcho, WIS out of Columbia. Well, first of all, how are you guys enjoying the trip so far? I mean, is it everything you guys would have imagined being a part of the NCAA tournament? 
Uh, yeah, just uh, getting adjusted to the time. Uh, had a great, great dinner with the team yesterday. Uh, just excited and ready to play tomorrow. You know, I was talking to Tim Beret uh, yesterday, and he was talking about the Barcelona trip and how that incident in front of the team hotel with the bombing kind of brought the team together. Can you guys just talk about that moment and what it was like to go through it? And do you think that was a turning point in terms of how this team really came together as one, how it's carried you guys through this season? Uh, yeah, uh, that was a very uh, scary incident, you know. But for us to um, be out there and just all we got, boots all we got out there, and I thought that brought us together more as a team, you know. Being stuck in the hotel for about 24 hours, couldn't go nowhere. So we um, just really uh, brought our relationship closer. Any other questions? Wow, you're on fire. I, I guess it'll just be uh, us three right here. <laughs> Uh, when Dante w went out, you know, midway through the ACC play, I mean, there was a lot of talk that, you know, will this team continue to to stay strong? It seems like at first there was an adjustment period. Do you guys think you've been able to kind of adjust to life after Dante, and how has he been able to still influence you guys in a positive way from the bench in terms of trying to still apply some of that leadership he had when he was on the floor? Yeah, um, things changed a little bit on the court with his versatility, with his ability to bring the ball up the court, and uh, – Things on, def on the defensive end, being able to switch. But uh, with Amir stepping in, I think he did a great job for us. And uh, our guards just continue to step up and make plays. So I think we adjusted fine. Uh, but his leadership is still there. He's still a voice in the locker room and a big part of our team. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel 9 in El Paso. What is your guys' impression of what you've seen on film of uh, New Mexico State, um, what they do well? And, and do you guys see them as? you know, a, a threat to you guys? Uh, yeah, they're a pretty good team. You know, they're 28 and five. You know, that's hard to do in Division One basketball. So we got a lot of respect for them. You know, they rebound the ball pretty good. They get out in transition. Uh, they play good defense. So um, we just got to be ball strong, you know, go in there uh, confident, shoot the ball well. Obviously, uh, Scott Eisberg, WCIV, Charleston. Obviously, you know, each and every year that 12-5 that game always seems to be the upset game. Everyone talks about the upset game. It happens so much. Do you guard against just being the upset game a little more, or do you just have to be on the offensive and play your game? Yeah, we kind of been like the underdog all year, so it's nothing new to us. You know, we've been battling through adversity all year, losing Dante, losing Shelton for a few games, so it ain't nothing new that we can't handle. Gabe, for you in your final go. Yeah, I'm sorry to do it to you, but just name every time. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Joe Gorcho, WIS, Columbia. Gabe, for you, just knowing you've worked so hard to get to this moment, you know, the entire team has, just to have this opportunity, what does it mean to you and what does it say about this program and where it's it's going? Yeah, uh, this is a special moment for me, uh, just knowing the things we've gone through the first three years, uh, just continuing to battle, and uh, this – one of my, going into my senior season, I wanted to make this goal. And uh, I think me and Dante did a great job of uh, rallying the troops and leading our season to get to this point. And it, it was just a blessing to uh, be in this situation, like knowing you're going to be selected. So just continue to fight and just take one, one day at a time and uh, just ready to be out there tomorrow. Uh, Scott Eisberg, WCIV TV in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, for both of you guys, I know they say take it one game at a time, one game at a time, but did, did any part of you peek down the bracket and say, you know, theoretically, this could end up as a battle against the College of Charleston, a battle for Palmetto State supremacy in the second round and whatnot? Do you have to look down the bracket and see that could potentially be there? Uh, yeah, I mean, just looking at our pod, uh, just focus on these first two, first two games, also, seeing College of Charleston, I uh, have a lot of respect for those guys. I know a bunch of them. Uh, so I've been talking to a few of them of, of their potential matchup. So it'll be uh, exciting to see. But uh, first thing is tomorrow night and just taking care of business tomorrow night. Again, Joe Gorcho, WIS in Columbia. Marquise, for you, I mean, you've had a, a phenomenal season. You've done something that only no one has since 1980 with the, you know, the 500 points, 100 rebounds and such. How have you improved your game to get to a point where you're versatile and you can do so many things on the floor? And, and how have your teammates kind of helped you build that up as well in terms of part of your game and adding to it? Uh, it all started in the off season. You know, we worked pretty hard in the off season. And then just putting in extra hours outside of what's mandatory, you know. 
So just uh, just trying to improve my game each and every summer we get off and doing practices, going hard and things like that. Any other questions for our student athletes? Joe Gorch, Joe Gorch, O W I S in Columbia. I'm just wondering how you think you guys are gonna handle the nerves tomorrow when the lights go on, you guys take the floor, you hear the anthem, then you realize we're a part of the dance, something we've been waiting to be a part of our whole lives. For both of you, if you could. Uh, yeah, I think the nerves will be there to the uh, tip off. But I think after the ball tips off, everyone will be fine. I think we'll just handle it fine. Just, but I'm excited now. I feel like I'm ready to play now. So uh, yeah, leading up to the game, just a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, nerves. But after the ball tip off, I think everybody will be fine. Yeah, uh, going off with Gabe, I think uh, a lot of guys going to be excited. You know, first uh, few minutes, everybody get those uh, jitters out. You know, some guys might be nervous because they never played in the NCAA tournament before, but. I think once the uh, first few minutes uh, go past, we'll be fine. Any other questions? <laughs> Joe Gorcho, WIS, Columbia. I just want to know a little bit what Coach Brad Brownell has been like in practice over this last month. Knowing that you guys had this opportunity, that you guys were on your way to the NCAA tournament, what's he's been, what has he been like? Is the mood kind of lighting up, or is it even more intense now, knowing that you guys have a chance to compete for a national championship? Uh, he's been uh, pretty excited he coming to practice every day to uh, coach us. Uh, the more uh, it gets to game day, his uh, his juice uh, tightens up. So it's just been a real uh, exciting atmosphere. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's coaching us the same as he has in the first game, as he has the 30th game. Uh, I mean, he brings it every day of practice uh, and challenges us every day. Uh, but he did a great job of uh, manage, uh, managing us in terms of no one want to go hard and uh, give us some time off, and uh, I think we'll be ready to go tomorrow. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. It's nice work by you.
We'll get going with Coach Brownell in about two minutes. If you could please silence your cell phones and make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Up next for Clemson, head coach Brad Brownell. And if you could please start with an opening statement. Yeah, really excited to be uh, back in the tournament. Uh, couldn't be more proud of our team and uh, what our team's had to go through here uh, this season. Um, not much expected of us early in the year. Thought our guys just uh, really bonded well on a trip to Spain this summer, and and just uh, tremendous camaraderie. We did have some good have do have some good experienced players back, so I was pretty confident that we'd have a good team. Um, Dante Grantham, Gabe DeVoe, seniors that have been with us a long time and, and done a lot of really good things uh, for our program, and then Marquise Reed, Shelton Mitchell, and Elijah Thomas, three three guys that gained a lot of experience the previous year. Um, but our team really had to readjust uh, with Dante's injury. That was challenging, but we've uh, we've hung in there and played really well defensively. I think we've continued to be a pretty solid team. And then uh, offensively, we're, I think we're getting better. I think we're a team that uh, has made some adjustments. It's uh, revolved around our guards. Our guards have played extremely well, and we're looking forward to a, a game against a New Mexico State team that is playing great basketball. Have a lot of respect for Chris and the way they're. Their team is set up. They guard unbelievably well, um, very pesky and aggressive defensively. They rebound the fire out of the ball. Um, and it's I, I lived at the mid-major level for a long time. To win 28 games is extremely difficult. I think this is a team that's used to winning, so we know we're going to have a competitive group on the other side. Questions? Coach over here, Joe Gorcha from WIS in Colombia. You mentioned right off the bat that trip to Spain and how that brought the team together. I wonder when the bombing happened right in front of the team hotel and there was that moment where you didn't even know where all the players were. Do you think that kind of really enhanced the process? I know part of the foreign trip is getting these guys to bond and come together, but you think going through that really aided this team moving forward throughout yeah, the season? I don't, I don't think, obviously, the terrorist attack necessarily did it. Um, it certainly gave us pause and allowed us to take a step back and, you know, maybe appreciate the, all the blessings that we have in our lives and to be thankful for a lot of things that sometimes we take for granted. Uh, and to be that close to it helped in that way. But for whatever reason, I just think this team clicked right away. Uh, I think we have some freshmen on our team that are have tremendous personalities, outgoing personalities, and and some characters that have really kind of energized our, our program in some ways. Combine that with some older players that are good players, mature. And I think there's just a, there's just a feeling that not only guys really like each other, but there's a spirit in your locker room. There's a spirit with your team that is extremely positive. And uh, our team doesn't take things too seriously, uh, but we work when, we're, when it's time to work. We really do, and we prepare when it's time to prepare. Um, so I just think it's one of those years where you're coaching a team that the pieces really fit both on the court in terms of what we ask guys to do and what they want to do, and then also off the floor with how they get along with one another so well. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. 12 
you know, the national media picking a, a 12 to pick a five is every year thing. This isn't necessarily a Clemson thing, but this happens to be one. Um, this year, that New Mexico State seems to be one of the trendy 12-5 yeah. upset picks. Is that more about just the tradition of the 12-5, or is there something about New Mexico State that you can understand why people would latch on to this team being possibly no, a team that makes noise? No, absolutely. I think, I think New Mexico State is a really good team. That's why. Uh, and you watch them play. And you understand that. I mean, they beat Miami, beat Illinois at Illinois, uh, beat Davidson, another tournament team, played USC to the wire in Hawaii. And then, again, I, my respect for, for the mid-major basketball is because that's where I started and coached as a head coach for eight years and assistant for eight years. I know how, how hard it is to do that. It's not easy to be the favorite to win the league and then to go win the tournament. There's pressure there. And I really think – you know, I'm sure the top two, three seeds in the tournament, the top ten teams in the country, maybe there's some separation. But I don't know that there's a lot of separation after that, to be honest with you. The 12s, the 5s, the 7s, the 10s, the 6s, the 11s, I don't think there's much difference. I think everybody has really good players. I think there's more better coaches than ever. Um, New Mexico State has an older group that's used to winning. Uh, they defend you. They rebound. They do the things that you need to do to be good. Um, so I don't think it's just the trendy pick of it being 12-5. I think it's because New Mexico State has good players, a good coach, and they play well. Coach, back over here to your left. Yep. Yeah, Joe, Joe Gorcha, WIS in Columbia. I'm just wondering, you know, after the years of just working hard trying to get to this point to be back in the NCAA tournament, what does it mean for you? And then how do you help the players who – most of them in your program have not experienced a moment like this. Well, it's very rewarding, you know, for me personally, because there's been a lot of hurdles that we've jumped along the way to get to this point, and we're optimistic that this isn't just a one-time thing because we've raised a bunch of money and, you know, renovated a facility, improved our program, improved our name. Uh, we've done a lot of good things in the meantime. It just, you know, this is the first time we've ever kind of made it all the way through. Um, but I think it's something that we can continue to do, and that's what we're excited about. In terms of playing in the tournament, uh, we're not trying to do anything different. We're just trying, but we are trying to really enjoy it. I, I want our team to enjoy this experience. I want them to have a good time. I want to embrace it. Um, I think because we are a loose kind of group, that's good for us. Um, and when it's time to play, we'll go play. And uh, hopefully we're, we're good enough to do that. We, we've been that way all year. We haven't really let things bother us from the outside. We haven't concerned ourselves with being picked 13th in the preseason. We haven't been too worried that the pundits are picking New Mexico State to win. We just kind of worry about us and what we're doing. And, uh, you know, what we're doing is fun because we like each other a lot. And we really appreciate what the other guys are doing. And so we come to practice every day and have a great time together and put in our work. And then... Let the chips fall, fall uh, where they may. Uh, Aaron Torres, The Athletic. Uh, Coach, uh, you talked about your time at the mid-major level. Obviously, I know you don't want to speculate too much on someone else's program, but what does it say about a program, the fact three NCAA tournaments in four years under three different head coaches? I feel like in your profession it speaks to a culture. It speaks to something larger than just one coach, one player, something like that. Yeah, I think it speaks to a commitment at a school, and that's – that's hard. I, I think that's one of the things, you know, some places have advantages when you don't have football because uh, everybody's driving towards basketball and everything resource-wise is put into basketball. And I lived at it, Wright State and UNC Wilmington. And, uh, you know, that's one of the hurdles we've kind of challenges we've had at Clemson is making basketball uh, a big thing there. And there's a lot of things that we've done to try to do that. But for that to happen at a school three out of four years, I think shows a commitment by a university. It's not just a coach. It's a university commitment with athletic directors, board, presidents. It's a culture. And uh, that's how you have long-term success. In the back. Uh, Brad Scott Eisberg, WCIV TV in Charleston. Um, what were the conversations like, I guess? What was it like? Years ago, when you got Earl Grant from Wichita, then what was it like that when Charleston got him from you, and now that all three of you are together in one region, the irony behind all of yeah, that? Yeah, really, uh, one of the biggest smiles I think our staff had was after we saw our name was to see Charleston and Auburn playing in our same region. Um, 
you know, I didn't know Earl when I hired him at Clemson. He was out at Wichita with Greg, um, but I knew that I wanted a South Carolina guy, and uh, I'd heard a lot of good things about him from several different people, and so he was somebody that I immediately wanted to talk to and had a lot of respect for Greg and the way he does things and knew that if he was working for Greg that he was not only learning a lot, but he was a quality person. And so, you know, when I got the opportunity to talk to Earl, he was excited about the opportunity to come back to uh, South Carolina. He was a joy to work with every day. Uh, unbelievable positive person with great personality, beautiful family. Um, you know, still talk frequently, uh, multiple times a month. And obviously, he talks with our staff, our staff with their staff all the time. Um, so. You know, I, I'm just really proud of him to watch what he's done because I know when he took over in Charleston, it was in not very good shape. And in four years, he's done unbelievably, you know, a remarkable job, really. Um, and it doesn't surprise me in the least. And I think he'll continue to be very good, much like the question I just got here about being in the tournament three out of four years. Wouldn't be shocked if that's what happens with, with Charleston. But uh, uh, I'm just a huge fan of Earl Grant, always have been, and, and uh, you know, was was blessed that he was able to work with me at Clemson for a while. Mark Rudy, Las Cruces Sun News. Coach, um, Jamiro Jones, obviously one of the best rebounders in the nation. What have you seen from him, and what do you kind of tell your guys, you know, going up against a guy like that? Really unique player. Really unique. And, I mean, knows for the ball that you can't explain, you can't coach. It's just guys have it. And uh, he's an igniter on offense because of his ability to dribble and pass after he rebounds it. And that's what makes – extremely difficult to guard. Um, you know, you're not going to look at him or watch him on film, and it's not going to wow you until you look at his stat line, and then you kind of look at some games, and it's like he just keeps getting the, the rebounds. I don't. I think there were six games maybe where he had 20 rebounds. I mean, that's unreal. Um, but his, you know, relentless pursuit of the ball and his nose for the ball is, you know, I don't think those are traits that are coachable. I think those are something that's unique that a guy just has. Brad Todd Summers, WSBA TV out of Spartanburg. Talk about the fact that five of the top seven scores on the floor tomorrow night for you will be guys that have transferred into your program. Is that something you had to change your philosophy on from when you first got here early on to just the way basketball is played now? And, and just the guys all coming together from different backgrounds, meshing together and yeah, making it work? I think it's work. a combination, Todd, to be honest with you. I think it's uh, – we did start, you know, several years ago, we did start holding a couple scholarships more for guys that we thought were transferred. And, and where it started was we were losing out on some good players. We'd get down to the final two, and we'd lost a couple. And we noticed that some of them were wanting to go, weren't happy where they ended up going and, and wanted to come back. Uh, and we felt like we needed to keep some scholarships available for guys like that. Uh, and so it just kind of happened. And then just some other unique ones, like Marquise Reed was just a unique situation for us. We happened to play him and knew how good he was, probably more than most people realized how good a player he was. We thought his stats would transfer, and obviously they have. Um, and then we've also just taken some guys like a David Scara that he just fits me and what I believe in and uh, our team. And uh, he's not some high-powered scorer or anything like that, but he's a guy that – helps your team win and and uh so yeah we've kind of kept some scholarships first time we've ever had a grad transfer with mark um and he's been terrific for us in terms of a blend with eli but i don't think that's easy and that's not easy to plan that way um but it's not something we just have planned hey we're going to take transfers all the time or anything like that some of it's worked out we did plan on taking a couple and i do think now just with how many transfers there are uh, it just has gotten to be there's so many now that you're probably silly if you don't have at least one scholarship sitting around uh, for somebody because that's just the nature of it. And you're probably going to end up with one because, to be honest, you're probably going to lose somebody. Kids these days just – I don't think there's anything wrong with it. When I was younger, Coach, I did. Um, but now I think we ask so much of them and we, we can work them in the summer. We can do all these things with them. We take all their time, and kids play 8, 9, 10, 11 minutes as sophomores and juniors. I can understand if a kid wants to go somewhere and start and play 28 minutes when he's asked to do all the things that we ask him to do in any college program at this level. So there's nothing wrong with that, and I think that's part of why kids are leaving and just why uh, there's so many more kids available. 
Uh, Aaron Torres again, athletic. Uh, you talked earlier about some of the disadvantages of being at such a prominent football school. What about advantages? I just, oh, yeah. yeah, no, I was going to say, I feel like the Clemson brand specifically, no thanks in large part to football, has been hot. Has that helped you guys at all? Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to a lot of things. The tremendous advantage being at Clemson um, because of the success under Coach Sweeney um, and what that's meant nationally for our school and our athletic department as a whole. Um, you know, I'm a huge Coach Sweeney fan. He's left me messages multiple times this week and sounds more excited than I do that, we me that we're in the tournament. He's a huge basketball guy. He played high school basketball. Uh, so we have a great relationship. And, you know, when we have football games, we've got our best recruits going to that environment, Death Valley, on a Saturday. It's an, it's an incredible experience, and it's an incredible weekend. And whenever we bring a recruit, people who aren't from the area, they're shocked at, at what Clemson really is. Um, because it's special. But then at the same time, in the middle of January, when we're playing a big-time ACC game, Coach Sweeney's expecting six or eight tickets right there behind the bench for some of the best college football players or high school football players in the country. And obviously, we're happy to deliver. Um, so it's an unbelievable uh, experience. It's a shared experience. And I know a lot of schools talk about family. And I cringe because I've been some places and I've, I hear other schools talk about it. We live it. At Clemson, we have a, we live in a town of 12,000 people. Um, I mean, there's six football coaches that live in my neighborhood. Um, we we just are all around each other all the time, and it's real. We actually really do spend time together. We want we want the best for all of our athletes. We want the best for our students, um, and a big part of that is is the athletic department and what that means uh, to our community. And it's special. And I think when you come to Clemson, that's what you see. Time for two more questions. Again, Coach Joe Gorcho, WIS. Um, in regards to the two seniors, you've talked about Dante and Gabe. With Dante, how has he still been able to impact the team despite the fact he can't play? And with Gabe, what has he meant to this program from freshman year to now? He's just grown as a yeah. player. Well, he and Dante have both grown tremendously as players and people. Um, you know, Gabe wasn't highly recruited. Uh, he had some good offers, but I don't know if he had another ACC offer. Um, but I just always thought he was going to be what he is now, and it just was going to take a little time. And uh, he's an extremely bright guy. He's got over a 3.0 in our business school. Um, he's going to be successful playing basketball for another 10 years. He's going to be successful for the next 30 years. Um, and some of that is shown with Dante's injury. Gabe has raised his level of play and also his level of leadership. The first couple of weeks were hard for Dante. Uh, the injury, the surgery, the rehab, just it was challenging. Uh, but in the last month, he's been much better. And uh, I don't know if I've met a more genuine young man than Dante Grantham. His personality is really our team. That's the biggest change is that our team has taken on his personality. His pers personality is unselfishness. He's actually given up more in his career than almost anybody I've coached for a guy who is as talented as he is. And a lot of times he's one of those guys that will sit back and take a back seat to another good player just because he wants that guy to have success. He really does. Um, so he's as happy for our team, even though he's not playing as anybody I can, I can imagine. And that's one of the reasons why I love him. Final question. Shannon back. Somerville, Fox Carolina. What's the final message you want to leave your team before they take the court tomorrow? You know, we're not going to do anything different. Be who we are. Uh, enjoy this experience. You know. We're putting in our preparation all week, and we, we're going to be prepared. And being prepared and playing well is good enough, but we got to play well. And let's go out there and, and do what we've prepared all year to do, and especially this week. And then let's smile and have a good time and, and uh, enjoy this experience. Thank you, Coach. OK, thank you all.
College of Charleston student athletes coming up. Make sure you silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. And make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Yes, for just me, but. For the College of Charleston, Charleston student athletes are Jarrell Brantley, Joe Chile, and Grant Riller. And questions for the student athletes. Andrew Miller with the Charleston Post and Courier. Um, this is for Grant and, I mean, for, yeah, for Grant and Joe. Just, you know, this is going to be a matchup between guards and just talk about their, their, their three guards and the, what you've seen from them and kind of the keys uh, that's going to happen. Um, I know Harper a little bit, a little bit from AAU, so kind of been matching up against him in the past. Uh, Bryce Brown, I don't know too much about, but I know they're having good seasons and I think it should be fun. Yeah, very good backcourt. Um, can score the ball. They play make really well. Um, just looking forward to the matchup. It should be fun. In the back. Uh, Scott Eisberg, WCIV TV in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Um, for you guys, uh, anyone that wants to answer, you know, Clemson's kind of like the popular pick to be upset in that 5-12. You guys are kind of a popular pick to upset Auburn. Do you do you take that into mind at all, or do you just have to? play the game as normal or do you use motivation that people people respect you and they're picking you as an upset um try not to pay attention to the noise uh, what people are saying and i'm sure a lot of people are picking us to lose we just try to focus on our preparation um, we go about it the same way um, we're confident in our game plan and we're gonna go out and do our best so i'm trying not to focus on what everybody else is saying here in the back joe gorcho wis tv in columbia south carolina for any one of you guys, the excitement just to be on this stage. I mean, how's it kind of sinking in right now that you guys are a part of the tournament you've watched for years on TV? And how do you think you'll handle the moment when the lights turn on and you realize you're about to lace it up in the big dance? Uh, I, I just say for myself, I think this is an amazing experience. You know, some people never get to cherish this moment. So I think that's the biggest part about what we're doing, you know, just try to like embrace everything that we're going through. And so I think we've been through adversity. We've been through good times and bad times. So I think when we get on the court, after we get past the first few minutes, I think we'll be all right. Any of you other guys want to answer that? Or? Yeah. No, we'll okay. I think he answered it. <laughs> all right, Aaron Torres with The Athletic. We'll start with Grant, then we'll go to Joe. Um, Coach Grant, every year he's been with this program, you know, incrementally better every season. What is it about him you guys that allow you guys to continue to get better as the years have gone on? Uh, just sticking to his system. Uh, pretty much just buying into what he says. Uh, we have a lot of hardworking guys. We've been together for about three years now. So just just the experience, I think, just that's about it. Yeah, um, I, I think you said, what is it about him? Like, 
Uh, he talked about our workers' mindset. We get that from Coach. Um, he's, from day one, he stepped in and he told us we was going to have to work hard um, and we could achieve um, some pretty remarkable things. So um, that's what he instilled in us from, uh, instilled in us from day one. So um, I think that's what it is about him. I, I was going to say, too, I think you might have just answered it, but, Grant, you said, you know, taking his mindset and, and the things that he's instilling in us, what exactly is he instilling in you guys? Uh, just hard work and toughness. That's where he came from in the past, so just just trying to feed off him. Again, here in the back, Joe Gorcho, WIS. Jarrell, for you, being from Columbia as well, just what does it mean to, for you, watching the Gamecocks last year, your hometown team going to the tournament? Now you get to go ahead – and do the same thing. Is a little pride in that, like, hey, now it's now it's my turn to represent for the Midlands as well on the big stage. A little bit. I think I haven't got too you know carried away with that whole mindset, but it it has been fun, you know, to kind of put on away from home. But at the same time, I think Charleston in a lot of ways is my home, so and my teammates. So I think this this is more fun. Uh, Andrew Miller from the Post and Courier again. Uh, this is going to be a game where Auburn likes to press. They like to turn the ball over and. And you guys have been a team that does not turn the ball over very often. And talk about how important that's going to be uh, tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be the battle of styles. Um, who can ever impose their will on the game. Uh, we know they like to play fast and try to pick up the tempo. Um, and we try to take care of the ball. Um, I think we got talented guys, older guys. Um, and we're confident that we'll be able to do that. So it'll be fun. In the back. Uh, it's the same thing as Joe said. Uh, Scott Eisberg, WCIV TV in Charleston. Uh, Grant and Joe, you guys both had pretty serious injuries during your career. Jarrell, you could have earlier in the year, but you came back. How good does it feel like that you're all clicking, you're all healthy, you're all ready to go? Has this kind of been what you've waited for and the pinnacle of, of where everything should be? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, for myself, <coughs> uh, my injury is kind of in the past. I try not to think about it too much, but... Just, just being here, everybody being healthy, I think this is what we live for, and this is what we work for, so we'll be ready. Yeah, I think what it's taught me is just to enjoy the moment. Um, it can be taken from you in a second. So I, I don't take any of this for granted. I know the guys don't. Um, we're just happy to be here, and we're ready to compete. So, um, yeah, I'm happy. James Crepier from AL.com. Jarrell, as, as much as the guards are going to be a, a focus in this game, Auburn has the most success when their role players are contributing. You're going to face off against a couple of those guys. How important do you feel your matchup is against a Deshaun Murray and a Chumo Kiki and a Horace Spencer to keep them from getting to double-figure scoring? Uh, I think I will attack it like I attack every other game, you know, follow the scout, you know, follow the game plan and stick to my standards as, like, what coach gives us and the standards. And if I do that, I think I'll be all right. Again, here in the back, Joe Gorcho, WIS TV in Columbia, South Carolina. Drill again for you. I, I believe you went to Ridgeview, correct? Mm -hmm. the, your team, your former team, just won the state championship. I'm just wondering, has anyone reached out to you? What those conversations might be like, knowing they just made a deep run, they completed the mission. Now you won your conference tournament. Now you have a chance, also. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I keep up with a, a few of the guys there and a few of the coaches. A lot of a lot of guys got away. But for the most part, I mean, I keep up. I don't talk too much to them. But it has been fun to see them win, and hopefully I can continue to win, too. So. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK. Thank you all.
All right, just a reminder to silence your cell phones and announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Uh, but first, head coach Earl Grant with an opening statement. Yeah, um, just really excited about this opportunity uh, for our program. You know, I know the players are excited. We got a very uh, tough challenge with Auburn on Friday, but we really look forward to it. Okay, coach here in the back, Joe Gorcho, WIS here to your left in the back. Joe Gorcho, WIS TV in Columbia, South Carolina. I mean, arriving to this point has to feel really rewarding after what you guys have been trying to do building there. Just how is the excitement right now trying to get settled in for this tournament? And how do you get your team to kind of manage the nerves maybe tomorrow when the lights go on and they realize we're a part of something we've been watching on TV our whole lives? Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting. You know, every year we start the season off and we start to get into the, um, the early meetings and, and – you know, the first of the semester, we watch one shining moment. We talk about the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, we set our goals. And sometimes you come up a little bit short. Like last year, we lost in the championship game. We thought we could make it to the NCAA tournament, but we came up short. Um, so it's, just, it's exciting for our city, you know, for our fans, our administration, uh, all the former players, you know, all the coaches who, who uh, built this program before me. And now we just want to, you know, go out and put our best foot forward against a really good team and, and, and stay true to who we are once we get into the game. In the back, Chris. Kyle Bonnegar, ESPN.com. Coach, there's a couple head coaches here that you've, you know, been on their staffs in the past. What, what have both of them meant for your development as a, as a coach? Well, you know, I spent 10 consecutive years with, uh, you know, Brad Vernell and Greg Marshall before coming to the College of Charleston. So, I mean, they taught me a lot, but the thing they taught me more than anything is just being true to yourself. Uh, don't be apologetic for who you are as a person and as a coach and what you believe in. Both of them were great fathers and great husbands. They were great examples with their kids and their wives, and they were good ball coaches. And so I learned a lot, you know, from a basketball standpoint, but more importantly about ethics and what it, you know, how to be a good man and a good role model to the players that you're dealing with. And I really appreciate that 10 years I had a chance to spend with those two guys because they really molded me as a young coach. Earl Scott Eisberg, WCIV TV in Charleston. Has it dawned on you? You're in San Diego. You're at the big dance. You're taking your team on national TV tomorrow to play Auburn. Has it dawned on you yet? Like, oh my gosh, or is this what it was supposed to be? And it's uh, just business as usual. I mean, it's weird. You know, really, it hadn't dawned on me. I mean, all week we've been practicing. We've been trying to refocus after the conference championship game. We really had to fight hard to win that game. But after two days, uh, you know, taking two days off, we talked about just getting grounded, getting our feet back on the ground and trying to prepare for what was next. And so we had, I hadn't really reflected. I mean, we've been working and preparing, getting ready for this moment. And we know we got a huge challenge in front of us. I think it's a great opportunity for our conference. And again, our program, uh, our campus, you know, our city. So we just want to go out and make sure we play basketball the way we're capable of, you know, tomorrow. Coach, again, here in the back, Joe Gorcho, WIS, Columbia, South Carolina. Jarrell Brantley, one of the players from the Midlands. How has he impacted this team? I feel like when you kind of watch his development and growth, even throughout just this season, he's really elevated his play. How does he impact this team in a positive way, and how significant will his performance tomorrow night be in determining the outcome of this game? Well, I mean, he's, he's impacted this program more than he's impacted this team, you know, because we're trying to build a program, not just one team. Um, and when I got here, we had nobody on our roster from the state of South Carolina. And so he was my first uh, kid that decided to come play for us and play for this program from the state. And I know how important our state is uh, with our fan support and, and the people in the, in the city around, you know, the surrounding area want to pull, pull for the kids in the state. So he just brought a great determined spirit and a great energy and a great passion to us. Uh, after my first year, we were searching for passion and energy and, and toughness, and he, he, he does all of that for us. Um, how much, uh, in a, especially in a time like this, do, does, name and affiliation. Oh, Scott Eisberg, WCIV TV in Charleston. Um, how much does the alums of this program? It seems like a really tight knit alum group. I mean, you've got AJ at Alumni Day, and Marion Busby was saying the other day he texts you all the time, and Danny Johnson's there. Those guys are there every single night. The pressure is obviously on because those guys want the best for the program. But do you lean on them at all? Do you talk to them about what this was like for them 20 years ago? Do you? Is there any kind of back and forth with all those guys that are at the arena all the time? Not really. I mean, uh, those guys have been very supportive. You know, I, I talked to Coach Kress about some of that. He was the coach for 20 years who coached those guys, you know. So I talked to him 
about some of those experiences. But the players, the former players, they just they just show their uh, support and they come around to practice sometimes. They send text, they call. Um, you know, we got a good working relationship with those guys. But but you know, I do talk to Coach Cress about what it was like. You know, how to prepare for these moments. Uh, probably more than I do the players. Coach, again, here in the back, Joe Gorcho, WIS-TV. Coach Brownell was in here, you know, a little before you, talking about how often you guys communicate between the two staffs and everything. I'm just wondering, now that you're in San Diego, is this the final day you guys are willing to talk to each other? Because after tomorrow, you guys could end up playing each other. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird. Uh, we talked a lot uh, the last two weeks, but we hadn't talked much the last three or four days. And so, you know, I think that's just hap it just happened. We hadn't really said much to each other, but, uh, but you know, again, at the end of the day, this is bigger than a game. Uh, the relationship will never change. You work with somebody for 365 days a year, and you do it for four years, and you're trying to build a program, and you win, and you lose together, and you cry, and you have good times together. That relationship is always going to be there, but we hadn't really talked a lot in the last three or four days. Uh, I think all of us are trying to prepare our teams to play the best basketball that we possibly can play. Any other questions for Coach Grant? I, I guess you've seen the way Wichita could be looked at as a quote-unquote mid-major or Winthrop was or VCU when they made the run. What could a win or two in this tournament do for the College of Charleston, the brand and what you're trying to build? I mean, how important would a win or two in this tournament be for you guys? Well, I mean, you know, we made the first step. We made it to the big dance. And so in order to move the program forward, at some, t at some point you got to win in the tournament. Uh, you know, we made it to the dance, uh, and so now the next step is try to win in the tournament, you know, and it's no guarantee because you only promised one game, but I, I just feel that's the next step. I mean, you know, every year you try to move it forward, got to the NIT, now we're in NCAA, and you start asking what's next. Uh, you know, you got to try to move forward and advance the program. That's the only way to do it. You're going to have to win some games in March. Coach, again, here in the back, Joe Gorcho, WIS-TV. Tomorrow's opponent, obviously, pretty formidable. They won their conference championship in the regular season, Auburn. What do you think it's going to take in this ball game tomorrow for you guys to walk away with that big victory on this floor? I mean, it's going to take a good performance. It's going to take some toughness. Um, we don't have to be perfect, I mean, but we got to really play well. Got to take care of the ball. Uh, we got to share it on offense. And defensively, we're going to have to really be sharp. And our rebounding is going to have to be at a high level. Uh, this is a good team. They won the SEC regular season championship. And Bruce Pearl is a good coach. So, you know, it's, we're really going to have to play well. And uh, we got a great challenge in front of us come tomorrow at 427. Uh, Aaron Torres, The Athletic. Uh, coach, uh, since you've been at the school, the, the team has gotten better every single year obviously a testament to you, what you and your staff are doing but what does it say about the group of guys that they've bought into what you're doing and, and have allowed you guys to coach them and get better every single every single year well I mean it says a lot about them because they you know they keep hearing the same message every year and it's to be honest with you it's really repetitive and it's boring probably you know uh, just about how to conduct yourself as a man you know in the classroom in the community uh, you know, giving an honest day's work, you know, and just making sure you're willing to work, having enthusiasm about what we're doing, being honest, you know, uh, having some humility about yourself, you know, if you're having all the success and being able to deal with it. And, um, and so it's a lot to go into it and trying to establish a certain way we want to live, our core values and our culture. Uh, so the guys are bought in. I think we've done a great job of uh, selecting the right type of people for the College of Charleston. You know, we, we got some good players, but they're better people than they are players. And then my staff has just been a tremendous asset because they work so hard to help me behind the scenes and they help me carry out the message. You know, they spend a lot of time behind the scenes working with these guys. So we've been very fortunate with the people that we've been surrounded with, you know, and the decisions we made in the recruiting process and in, you know, hiring a staff. Any other questions for Coach Grant? Andrew Miller with the Charleston Post and Courier. And, and Earl, just talk a little about the guard play and how important that's going to be. And then y'all's protection of the ball. You know, they, they really try to pressure you. They try to turn you over. And you guys have been done, done a good job of protecting the ball this year. Yeah, you know, um, they want to turn you over. And they do a good job of it. You know, they turn a lot of people over. They trap. They change defenses. Uh, they press you at the free throws. They pick you up on a made basket. Um, you know, you got to be smart. You're going to have to play some breakdown basketball because they're going to trap and run after you so you can't just run set plays all the time. You have to play breakdown basketball and make good sound decisions 
knowing when to go, when not to go, uh, shot selection, all of that stuff. So um, that'll be a challenge, but we've done a great job all year taking care of the ball. Uh, it's one of the things we've done well. Um, so I'm excited. You know, I'm excited about our, our, our guards. Uh, I'm excited about, you know, uh, our forwards taking care of the ball. You know, I'm not concerned. You know, if we just stay true to who we are, we, sh we should be able to take care of the ball. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.
We will get going with New Mexico State in a few minutes. Reminder to silence all cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. And make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Also, just raise your hand. We'll come around with a uh, microphone. Mario. For New Mexico State student athletes are Jamario Jones and Zach Lofton. Please raise your hand when you have questions, and we will begin the questions for our student athletes. Kyle Bonagher, ESPN.com. Zach, you've probably been asked this quite a bit over the course of the year, but for those of us who haven't been around the program, can you kind of walk us through the process that led you to transfer to New Mexico State this year? Um, my coach back home, my AU coach, Brian Sandifer, um, he spoke with, I think, Coach Jans and Jeff Myatt and uh, told me to come, to come take a visit. Me and my mom told, me, told us to come down there and um, just check it out, you know what I mean? You don't have to go there, but just go check it out. And uh, we went down there and we found a home, you know what I mean? My mom loved it, so we picked it. Any other questions for our student athletes? Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. For either one of you guys, the talk earlier today with the Clemson coach was the 12-5 trendy pick. Every year there's going to be a 12 that a lot gets a lot of attention and a lot of people are picking. And the five, he was very complimentary that you guys deserve that. What do you guys think, though, when you see national guys, national media, a lot of people picking you guys as the upset pick? Would you, would you rather that not be happening and you guys still fly under the radar a little bit? Or do you guys like the fact that people are giving you guys that much credit? We ain't buying it, but we focus right now. So, like, when the game comes, you will know. And, like, you just go see what's going to happen. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel 9 in El Paso. Um, for both of you guys, um, always want to be playing your best basketball in March. Uh, seems like you guys are doing that. Um, do you guys feel like that that is the case? And you know why is that? Um, I mean, I, I don't know if we're playing our best basketball. We're playing good, though. You know what I mean? Uh, staying consistent. 
and uh, it means a lot, you know what I mean? It, it's what it means the most, so I think we just got to stay consistent and stay strong. Aaron Torres with The Athletic. Guys, uh, question for Jamario. Um, you know, everyone in basketball talks about the word culture, right? Obviously, you were here under a previous staff. What allowed you and your teammates to buy into Coach Jan's culture when he arrived at New Mexico State? Um, our first, like, audition game, we lost to um, Texas Tech, like, by 40, I think. And, like, we all just bought in because he knew he knew what he was talking about for real. He came from a winning program, so, like, we were just on our own, and like when we seen we lost by that much, like we just bought into him. But but wouldn't that make you feel the opposite though? If you lost by forty, wouldn't that make you feel like maybe this guy doesn't know what he's talking about? You know what I mean? Nah, it just, we were doing our own thing at first. We were doing our own thing. We went like we was arguing with him and stuff and stuff like that. And like when we took the loss, we bought in. Mm -hmm. Zach, do you have anything to comment on on that though? Jamari was talking about the loss to Texas Tech, how that made you guys realize stop being individuals, start being kind of a, a group, you know? Exactly. Derek Gonzalez from the New Mexico State University Roundup, and this is for both you guys. You guys have seen an ACC, ACC team already this year in Miami. What does having that experience against a team from the same conference as Clemson do for you guys, maybe mentally and in terms of preparation for tomorrow's game? Always good to have experience against like an ACC team. You know what I mean? As we're playing Clemson, um, we I, I think experience is, is is the biggest biggest role that that game played for us. You know what I mean? We know what we're coming up against, so I think that helps us prepare. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel Nine. Uh, Jamario, you've been on this uh, on previous teams um, in New Mexico State. No stranger to the tournament, seven out of the last nine years, but it's been one and done for you guys. Why is this year going to be different? I don't know what to tell you on that one right there. It's just, it's a new year, new us. And so, I don't know. It's on the seniors. I guess it's different seniors, I guess. Like, we buying in, so everybody's just buying in with us. So, like, we just go see how it's going to go when we play Clemson tomorrow. Jamario, Jamari, a lot of people, I know there's been some stories written recently letting people around the country know that there's this rebounder out of New Mexico State that is uh, just a freakishly good rebounder. How do you describe yourself as a rebounder? Why are you such a good rebounder at six foot five when you're going against guys that are a lot of times much taller than you? How do you describe it? I'm just hooping. I wanted more than them, I guess. Like, I really, I'm really playing for some. I'm not trying to go back home, so I'm really playing for some. That's all it really is. Just give your name and affiliation this time around. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. Zach, when did you realize how good of a rebounder Jamario is? Uh, open gym when I first got here. I mean, no one rebounds like that in open gym, but he did, and yeah, obviously stay consistent. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel 9. Um, for both of you, I'll start with, with Zach. What... Uh, what has been the key to uh, to your guys' success under you know Chris and, and what he's done and kind of the culture that he's tried to bring in in year one and obviously your first year too? What what has he done that's that's really allowed you guys to buy in? Uh, defense, you know what I mean, getting us ready and uh, he's great, great, great at, at preparation. You know what I mean, and scouting other teams. So I think just, just defensively, he's he's great. And then uh, Jamario, did you see his socks in the WAC championship game? Oh. Did you have a chance to see those? The, the Aggie Giants? The, uh, they look like New Mexico flag socks. I'm just curious yeah. if those are lucky socks or you guys know anything about the uh, socks that Chris Jans has been rocking. No, them the first time wearing them, I think. It was the first time I seen them Giants. You want them, you want to wear them on uh, tomorrow, right? This is whenever he, we won a championship with them Giants, so we need to wear them and we make it to the championship. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for our student athletes? Back over here. Yes? Nope. Okay. One, one more over here. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel 9. Um, Zach, what has this experience been like so far? You know, you, you, everyone talks about just happy to be here. Um, I know you guys are looking to do something a little bit more than that, but what has this experience been like your first year here with the Aggies and getting to the tournament? Uh, well, 
I was here last year, and it, it's just a different feel this year. You know what I mean? You know, with with these guys and uh, how good we are. You know, we had a good team at Texas Southern, but it was just a little different. And um, it just it just feels. I, I'm excited. You know what I mean? To uh, go and play in front of the world with these guys and my new coach. Um, just ready. That's all I can say. Derek Gonzalez from the New Mexico State University Roundup. This is a question for you, Jamario. This is your second time in the NCAA tournament. You know, last year you obviously kind of didn't know what to expect and you went out there and played. This year you kind of know what to expect. Is there any difference um, with you mentally on how to prepare for this game or is it, are you just attacking it the same as you did last year? Yeah. Um, I really don't know what to tell you on that one, though. I don't know what to tell you on that. We just got to come focused and how we got here, defend, toughness, and that's it. You just got to run with it. Any other questions for our student athletes? Okay, thank you very much. Good luck. We'll have New Mexico State head coach Chris Jans in a few minutes.
sure to silence your cell phones, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, and raise your hand so that we can get you the microphone. Now, New Mexico State head coach Chris Jans. And if you can start with an opening statement. Obviously, we're thrilled to be here. It's what uh, every young man that starts playing basketball dreams of playing in is March Madness. And certainly, when you choose this profession uh, as, as a basketball coach, uh, you know, this is the goal to, to be in March Madness. And, uh, I'm elated for our university, um, for this storied program. Certainly to be able to give them another championship in our first year is rewarding. They're used to winning, and uh, it, it's kind of an exhale moment when, when we won at GCU and we could add our, our team to the list. Questions for Coach Jans. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. Hey, Jeff. Chris talked with the uh, Greg got a lot of questions actually about you earlier today and your time at Wichita State. And one of the things he said, I asked him what he actually learned from you or, or maybe what specifically he could remember. Nothing. <laughs> it's not what he said. He, um, he said that in the Final Four run that you made a specific call on how to handle Aaron Kraft and ball screens. Um, do you recall that? And was that indicative of the, the uh, responsibility he allowed you to have as an assistant coach? Yeah, my nine years at, at Wichita, uh, I look back on them fondly. Uh, it, it made me uh, the coach I am today. Uh, I'm blessed and fortunate to have worked for uh, such a, you know, arguably, uh, in, my, in my opinion, it's not arguably, but the best college basketball currently. And that run was awesome. And the thing about coach that um, people don't know unless you work for him is he wants coaches. He wants teachers. He don't want a clipboard carrier. He don't want just recruiters. He wants you to teach and coach the game, and he, he gives you that freedom. And certainly as a coach, that gives you a lot of confidence when you got Greg Marshall over your shoulder urging you to, to coach and teach. Um, and certainly over time, you know, I, I built some trust level up with him. I had been with him for, for, a few year, for a few seasons before we made that run. And, um, you know, turnarounds are quick, you know, in, in March Madness. And you got to rely on your staff to do a lot of advanced scouting. And um, he trusted me with that. And I do remember the Ohio State game. and. Um, you know, Aaron Kraft is, is an unbelievable college basketball player and a great leader. Um, but we picked up some things uh, in the scout, and we basically just drew a line, you know, about 17 and in and, and said we're not going to allow him in there. And, and normally we, we we're very aggressive and we're hedging ball screens and trying to put pressure on the handler. But for that particular game, uh, we, we built a halo there about 17 feet, and we just had to go under everything and almost dare him to shoot. And I think it just – took him out of rhythm a little bit. And obviously, you know, we had really good players that uh, ended up winning the game. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel 9. What's up, Andy? Um, Chris, what has this experience been like for you here in your first year? I, I read an awesome quote that Mark had with Jamario saying, he wasn't really sure if you guys were going to be any good this year. And, and here you guys are once again back in the tournament. What has the experience been like? It's been awesome. Um, it's been a heck of a ride. And you know, hopefully, it's not over. You know, it just came together. You know, a lot of factors have come into play. You know, it started obviously with, with Mario Mocha, the New Mexico State administration, you know, giving me an opportunity. Uh, and then we rolled our, our sleeves up and, and we got after it. And, um, you know, when you look at the roster, when you're trying to get a job of returnees, you know, you get excited because of all the returnees we had. But when the dust settled, it wasn't nearly as many guys returning. and. Uh, the best thing I did was hire an unbelievable staff. Um, my guys are big time. I mean, Lou Godino, my associate head coach, is a head coach on my staff. Jeff Myatt and Dave Anwar, the other full-time guys, are, are power five level of coaches in terms of individual improvement and dealing with the players and the relationships. And you know, when you've got a staff like that that's behind you, supporting you, it gives you a lot of confidence to run a program. And the most important thing that we got going is, is our players. Uh, we're talented. I mean, I've been telling that since day one, that, that we've got enough talent 
um, to, to make some noise. Um, and, you know, it's been talked about plenty of, of our struggles in the fall and the buy-in factor that wasn't quite there. And, and then, you know, finally we, we got on the same page and we kind of took off. And obviously it's been a wonderful season thus far, and we're hoping to continue it. This is Derek Gonzalez from the New hey, Mexico Derek. State University Roundup. Um, the 12-5 matchups in the NCAA tournament, that's where um, people usually try to find an upset with those games. Um, I think ESPN today said that 28% of people have actually picked New Mexico State to beat Clemson. How have you kept your team um, kind of focused on the task at hand, and how do you have them continue to embrace kind of the underdog mentality, even with all these people praising them leading up to the matchup with Clemson? You know, you can't control them. You know, I, I have no idea how much time they spend on their phones or how much time they look deep into the analysis and uh, the buildup of each game. But certainly we addressed it last night that, you know, it's great to have Charles Barkley, you know, pick us to win, but he's not scoring any points for us. And these other, you know, analysts and experts, uh, certainly there's been quite a few of them that we've been made aware of that have talked about us being a possible trendy upset pick. but. At the end of the day, you know, um, it, it has no bearing on the outcome. And once the ball's tipped and once there's some activity, uh, anything like that's going to go out the window. Uh, so we don't put much stock into it. And I'm really hopeful that our players aren't buying into to that type of talk as well. And I don't anticipate them doing that. They've been really mature all year long and have handled the moment and the platforms that we've played on. Aaron Torres with The Athletic. Coach, you talked about the buy-in factor a minute ago. It seems like it's been pretty seamless. I mean, the, the win-loss record indicates it was seamless, but it sounds like talking to you that it took a little bit longer. How did you instill that culture, your culture, with the guys coming from outside the program? Yeah, it took a, a long while, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I've led programs in the past, you know, in junior college and Division One. This is um, the sixth time I've had to do that. And it's the first time where I've taken over a program that had won so much in previous seasons. So that's a different animal. Uh, when you take over a program where they hadn't won much recently, uh, the returning players, there's instant buy-in because um, they haven't won. So they're willing and able and wanting to look at a different path and a different culture. But um, when you have some guys that have had a lot of success and they're strong-willed and they're tough-minded and um, they got in their head how things should be done. And then here I come in as a third head coach in three years with a completely different philosophy, a completely different outlook. And certainly I'm trying to build a culture like every head coach. We're trying to win games and have a good season. But at the same time, for the long haul, we're trying to you know, get our expectations on the table and get our culture on the table. And um, it was a struggle. And the fact that we had to recruit all summer and fall and we didn't have our whole team there till school started, we weren't able to do any team stuff. So we were behind the eight ball a little bit in terms of relationships and building our team. And, and I remember telling my wife, Sherry, um, about a week before the first game that, you know, if, if we get to Christmas and we're above 500, remind me of this conversation because I know once the games start rolling in and we lose some games, which we're going to, I'm going to be upset and depressed and in a bad place. And you need to remind me of this conversation that we should be happy if we're above 500 because if you looked at our schedule the way I looked at it before the season started, it was tough. I mean, it was a pretty rough schedule. Um, that we had put together and um, you know they just they just bonded they really they really did we're, we're lucky in the fact that for whatever reason the stars aligned and our guys like each other you know they really like each other they didn't like me a lot for a while but they liked each other and they played they played for one another and you know we had an exhibition game in, in Midland Junior College for uh, the hurricane victims of, of Houston and we got our tails whacked I mean Texas Tech and Coach Beard just whipped us and I really believe that was a big part of the impetus for change and, and really helped us to get on the same page, and we kind of took off from there. One of the players referenced that game. I would think Hold on. Hold on. Oh, wait, for the wait for the microphone, please. Uh, I, I, so one of the players referenced that exact game, Aaron Torres from The Athletic. Um, one of the players identified that game as a turning point as well. I would think from the outside that you know, a big loss would make them believe in you less but he said that he that it brought everyone together, made him believe in you more. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it yeah, seems it makes sense. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because they weren't listening very much. Um, they weren't bought into the schemes that I was selling, uh, the expectations I had of them to, you know, play with their hair on fire. And um, so that's that's what we mean by that is that they weren't playing the style of basketball and they weren't having the daily. Um, 
focus that, that I wanted, and, and, and it was a struggle. I mean, we talked to we were blue in the face about it and tried to scare them and say, you know, it's going to be a long season. we got to get on the same page, and I'm not changing. You know, you guys are the ones that are going to have to get on my side. And I would tell them a lot in practice. I'm like, listen, when you guys win, meaning you beat me down and, and, and you played the way you wanted to play, we lose. And if, it, if you want to win, you know, we, we got to get over here and, and get on my side of the fence. And uh, I really believe that that loss, they kind of looked around and said, well, we better give this a shot because this isn't going to work and it's going to be a long season around Las Cruces. And obviously none of them wanted to do that. But I knew it, it changed because our practices were so much better. You know, when we got home, we got on the court and we kind of just took off from there. Andy Morgan, KTSM News Channel 9. Chris, a uh, little bit more of a lighthearted topic. In the WAC Championship, after you cut down the nets, you showed off your socks. I want to know the story behind those socks. Yeah, that was fun. Um, I brought them again. I, I'm not superstitious, so we'll see. I, I let my wife uh, dictate what I'm going to wear. But um, I don't remember the exact game. Actually, it was Grand, uh, uh, Grand Canyon at home. Um, our AD, Mario Mocha, hit me up and said he had a gift for me. I was expecting something nice. Um, and he had a pair of socks. And he said, hey, I picked these up. Thought they were great. And you know, I thanked him. And then for whatever reason, I, I wore them uh, in the Grand Canyon game at home. And, and, and we had won that game. And um, I had those socks on. And there were some pictures of the socks. And I thought it was kind of cool um, to wear you know, th those socks in that particular game. And you know, again, I'm not superstitious. But as I was getting ready for the Grand Canyon game, um, in the championship game, I just dawned on me. I didn't pack this way. As I, I turned to Sherry, and I'm like, okay, I got the same suit on that I wore at Grand Canyon. And I said, and I got the same tie on that I wore at home versus Grand Canyon, and I'm wearing the socks. And I'm like, that's a good old man. It was a good start to the game. But, again, I, I'm not a superstitious guy, but it, it worked out that way. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. I know you've had to answer this question a lot this year, and some stories recently have been stored of bringing some attention to Jamario Jones as a rebounder. For people that are just tuning in, like many do around the country for the first time, and they're going to see a six foot five Jamario Jones who can rebound as well as anybody in the country, how do you describe why he's such a good rebounder? It starts with his competitive desire. You know, he's as competitive as any player I've coached in 26 years. He's special that way. Uh, he cares so much about winning, not just for himself, but for his team. And he's relentless. You know, rebounding starts with just going every time. And then he's picked up a knack of just having sonar for the ball, and he just tracks it down, and he watches it. And then, like you said, he's 6'5", you know, 195 pounds, and he's usually matched up with guys that are bigger than him. And obviously, it's on the, you know, his individual scouting report. It's the first thing that's the highlighted on that report is check him out. Um, and every, you know, everybody knows, you know, he's coming, and he just beats checks because he's so quick. I mean, the ball is shot, and he just has a flurry of moves, and, and he follows the ball, and he's relentless. So it all comes together to make him an elite rebounder on, on both ends of the floor. And a lot of guys are good offensive rebounders because they're motivated to score and maybe not as much defensive or vice versa. You know, the bigger guys usually have better defensive rebounders because they're big. But Jamero does it on both ends. I mean, the guys joke sometimes after the game how many rebounds he stole for them. You know, like, he's, you took two of my rebounds, Jamario, you know. And I'm like, he can steal all he wants as, as soon as he, you know, continues to build the rebound stats. But um, he's not just a rebounder, though. The thing that people need to understand about him is his IQ is off the chart. He knows how to play. You know, there's times in a scouting report or video session I look at him and I'm not sure he's paying attention to me. And then I'll ask him a question and, boom, he gets the right answer every time. So um, he helps us a lot with his IQ and his ability to make plays and, and his instincts are really good as well. Was, I'm sorry, just one follow-up to the Jamario question. Was there a moment this year when he won you over, when you realized that he was more than just a six-foot-five guy and, and that wasn't paying attention maybe in film sessions? Do you remember one moment when Jamario just kind of won you over? I don't. Uh, he, he's been really good in practice all year long. I was impressed with him this summer with his work ethic and how much he had bought in to, to, to me and to the system we were, we were trying to implement. And I really don't have a, a moment that I said he's here. It was from, from day one. He, he's been really good about everything. Mark Rudy, Las Cruces Side News. Chris, hey um, I guess, you know, you guys, I think Clemson is a top 50 offense as far as Ken Palm goes. You guys don't face that type of offense very often, especially for a while. Defense has led you guys all season long. Is there anything you do differently defensively or just try and do the same things you've 
done all season against an offense like that? First of all, if I'm not doing anything di different defensively, I'm not going to tell you right now. Um, but they're an awfully good team. I mean, top 50 offensively, like you said. They're top 10 defensively. There's not a lot of holes in their game. They're well, well coached and well taught. Coach brownell has got a great reputation. He's a great teacher of the game. And their staff has been around a long time and they're really good as well. And they've got a veteran team. You know, although none of those guys have played in the NCAA tournament, they play in arguably, you know, one of the better basketball conferences in the country. And they're playing against the best coaches and the best players that there is to offer in this game with the North Carolina and the Dukes and the Florida States and the Miamis. And you can go on and on and on. So they've seen it all. They've, they've gone against, you know, the best. They've prepared against the best. Um, they're, they're just a really good, sound basketball team. And uh, we'll have our hands full with them. Any other questions for Coach Jans? What's up, man? I guess for formality purposes, Eric O'Brien with CBS4 El Paso. Um, forgive me if you already answered this. We just got here. But uh, last year, this team lost in the first round, has a history of getting here and then losing in the first round. Why, with your experience, will that be different? And what have you been saying to the guys to get them up for this? Well, we'll find out if it's different tomorrow. I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that. And we haven't predicted any sort of wins. but. Um, you know, I'm not familiar that familiar with the, the past year's teams. All I know is, is this team has risen up to the platform, to the level when the stakes are the highest. They played the best, and I see no reason why they won't compete at a high level uh, tomorrow evening and and give everything they got. The only thing I've ever said is, whoever beats us in this tournament is going to have to really knock them out because they developed a competitive spirit uh, that haven't been around that often, and. They believe in themselves. They like each other. They believe in themselves. Obviously, they bought into to what we've tried to sell to them. And, and they're playing some of their best basketball of the season. So we're really hopeful that we'll get that onto the floor tomorrow night. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right.